Good morning and we'll be back from the break. It's now time for us to get into our topic of discussion. Like I did mention earlier, that we're going to be looking at the, uh, the uh, we're going to look at the scope of the small and medium-sized enterprises in Uganda. Totally looking at one of the key things is their contribution to the national economy. But however, it seems that this time around there are quite a number of, of challenges that are being faced. And it's those key things that we're going to be discussing this morning uh, during this same topic of discussion. So we're going to be looking at how the taxes are affecting the trader community, entirely possibilities of recovery as well, and also looking at the prospects for this new financial year from that particular angle of the small and medium-sized enterprises in Uganda. And joining me this morning on set with me, I do have uh, the president of the Federation of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, that is Mr. John Walugembe, who is uh, the executive director or president of FSMEs. You're most welcome, sir. Thank you for having me here this morning. It's a pleasure to join you okay. to discuss pertinent issues All right. that affect our businesses. I should uh, definitely also want to say uh, um, the last financial year, now we're in a new financial year. True. It is now the same situation where I want us to start from. How is the sector performing? Uh, well, what, well, what we are seeing is that the sector is going through a modest recovery, but uh, we are achieving less strides that we had, than we had anticipated. Because in addition to the lingering impacts of COVID-19, mm -hmm. we are also having new challenges. For instance, the high commodity prices, the high prices for fuel. What this does is that it increases the cost of doing business. It means that it makes it more difficult for consumers to come back. Because part of the challenge that uh, SMEs faced during the pandemic is diminished demand. So. If you have such a crisis, consumers are less willing to spend. Mm -hmm. And that prolongs the pain of many SMEs. So this is the context. Mm -hmm. Some sectors are recovering faster than others. Others are still struggling seriously. So this is uh, what the sector is. Uh, okay. Doing. Now, speaking of which, uh, just recently, a few weeks back, the, we were marking the International uh, Micro, Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises Day. Yes. And quite a number of things were highlighted, but still mm. on the issue of recovery, I think, was one mm. of the key highlights. But mm. speaking of uh, the importance or the role of SMEs for mm. a viewer to one of the economy, mm. at least if you're to break it down for the Ugandans, mm. what part of the economy um, does the SMEs <laughs> it's extremely important. They account for over 90% of the entire private sector in Uganda. Mm. Though their contribution to their documented contribution to GDP is low. Okay. It's about 25%. So, uh, however, they create a lot of jobs. Uh, they account for about 75% of all non-farm wage workers, um, and they also say to employ between 2.5 million people. Mm -hmm. SMEs are also vehicles that promote innovation, okay. that promote poverty reduction, and particularly for women, youth, and other marginalized groups. So SMEs are a very important tool uh, if a country is to move from poverty into wealth. Okay, yes. and uh, it representing 90%, I think that clearly shows you of, of what importance this sector is to the mm. economy. Speaking mm. of now challenges, if you're mm. to look through the Chikubo Trading Center mm. lately, mm. Uh, there is less traffic compared to the Chikubo that we were used to back in the time, mm. uh, before COVID I should say. But even mm. after the pick up of mm. uh, the lockdown mm. being lifted, still mm. Chikubo had some busy uh, in there now, mm. there is less. Mm. Why and what do you believe could have caused this? Before we have to the arcades as well. There could be two issues. One um, would be that the economy has yet to fully recover and that a lot of businesses are still struggling and that they were able to push through after, but their affairs have become unsustainable since then. Mm. That would be the first thing. Okay. Number two would be that the landlords are extremely unrealistic. They are trying to push uh, their own challenges back to the tenants. Okay. And the tenants feel this is too much pressure, let's move out. Mm -hmm. 
the other explanation would be that the mode of business changed. Because as, as you see that Chikubo then is not that Chikubo now. All towns are Chikubo because of some sort. Mm. You know, yes, you have very thriving suburbs with bigger kids and stuff. So people do not need to come to Chikubo anymore. They can find whatever they want there. From that area. Then the fourth explanation would be digitalization. That through digitalization, people can order things online. Without going into with, the physical going, place. In which case, you can still make money without operating a shop in Shkubo or any other kid. So there are diverse explanations and uh, it could also be a combination of these decisions and others. Mm. Yes. Okay. And um, now, on the issue of taxes, mm. most of it, even with uh, the new vision today in the press review, has an issue that taxes mm. have actually become a very huge challenge mm. uh, to probably the trader community. Mm. Now, from that particular perspective, Mm. These taxes, how mm. unfavorable are they? To, call, to use the word fair, unfair, mm. but I would use unfavorable mm. in a context. But I would say, how unfavorable have they been and how hard have they made life difficult? For no, these we, we appreciate that mm. businesses have to pay tax because we don't want to come here and we give the impression that we are pushing a line that businesses shouldn't pay tax. I don't mm. think that would be correct. Okay. So what we're saying is that people should pay tax, but uh, people should pay tax that is commensurate to what they earn. Uh, we are happy that this financial year government was very kind and said they are not introducing any new tax measures, which is good. And they said they are going to imp improve efficiency. Now, efficiency can mean many things. Efficiency means that you yourselves are being weak. And you cannot accommodate. Yes. Or efficiency means that people are outsmarting, whatever the case. Now, Government in the amendment to the Income Tax Act uh, and the Variety Tax and Stamp Duty Act and so on has introduced a number of uh, penalties mm. for businesses. For instance, if you provide a misleading statement, they charge you 110 million. If you're this, you pay 50 million. Mm. So we think this is completely unfair. A penalty should not be prohibitive that it defeats purpose. Okay. Because the person was sharing 110 million in an economy where the bulk of the people have a turnover of, I don't know, less than 10 million. Mm -hmm. where so it means that this payment is where I simply intended to close businesses. They either tended to deter so that someone fears or they can have the opposite effect that once they actually implemented was that penalty is issued to you, uh, you only have one recourse, that is, close your business. Mm -hmm. So that is where our concern is. We are saying, A, people should pay taxes, and we encourage SMEs to pay taxes. B, we encourage SMEs to be compliant, it's extremely important. Uh, we also appreciate government for the gesture that they extended this year, going to introduce new tax measures. However, we are saying that these penalties introduced in the Financial 2020 prohibitive. Okay. Have you seen people who say, don't drop here rubbish? We are going to charge you 200 million. 200. Sometimes you see that people have to drop the rubbish. Exactly. Why? Because exactly. they want to see, okay, uh, who is going to charge you 200 million? Because it's completely unrealistic. Mm -hmm. So some of these things can actually have a positive effect. Where people say, okay, let us there and see. Whether they are going to charge me. Yes, because mm -hmm. if I'm making 20 million, I need to charge the penalty. That is 110. Mm. Do you see? So that is our issue. Mm. Uh, so we are aligned to government's, uh, uh, government's objectives, but we are simply saying that these penalties should be more fair and realistic. More considering the context, it's a difficult economic times. Businesses have been battered for two years. Mm. Uh, we now have a new crisis of high commodity prices and inflation. This should not be a time to make it even more difficult for businesses. Mm. Yes, we should penalize those ones who are not willing to pay, but at the same time, we shouldn't make it so hard that if someone makes a mistake, their business is gone. Okay. And uh, speaking of which, when you look at the taxes, I believe at a time when everyone is focusing on economic recovery, taxes have become a event for mm -hmm. many of the Ugandan business community, not only from the 
uh, the small and medium enterprises, but also those that are actually part of micro, become very, very challenging to them. And one of the reasons as to why URA did not meet that target in terms of uh, the revenue uh, the revenue collection this at mm. uh, the end of the financial year mm. is um, highly because I think the businesses were not making money and now mm. and the taxes were still high in that particular uh, Mr. General Gebe, if we have to continue also moving in a uh, situation mm. by the end of the last financial year we looked at the African continental free trade area mm. as the opportunity for the small and medium sized enterprises mm. to at least build more on uh, expanding their base and also mm. the DRC's African community. Mm. How far have we gone with that? So the AFCFT is a process. Okay. I think certain event. True. Negotiations are still ongoing. Countries are still making agreements. I think 30% of, of the product lines have been liberalized. Countries are still making commitments with regard to the services that have been prioritized. Uh, business services, financial services, telecom services, transport services, and so on. So, it's, the OCT is a work in progress. What we just put awareness, this opportunity exists, please consider taking advantage of it. Now we are going to go into actual export readiness and holding for it. SMEs to ensure that we make certain SMEs ready and I will take them to market. We are doing this alone, we are working together with the assistance membership organizations because they are critical. Business membership organizations bring together their businesses. So, duty to educate their members to ensure they are able to take advantage of some of these. Okay. So, that's what we are doing. Okay. And I want to encourage, I mean, not just Uganda, but other African countries. A lot of potential lies on this continent. Okay. Uh, we can into a market of over 1.3 billion people on the continent with the IFCFT. Mm. And we can also take advantage of a combined GDP of over uh, $3 trillion. So it's huge. Mm. And uh, I would want them to interest themselves in the IFCFT. Mm. That remains an opportunity, and we still insist it is one of those that need to be leveraged if you are to expedite recovery from COVID-19. Okay. Mm. Uh, I would also beg you to comment on uh, the the issue of Kiswahili. We've had a report this morning mm -hmm. and some of the trader communities were excited mm. about the uh, fact that Kiswahili comes in and it's giving uh, a broad perspective whereby you can do your business in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would want to know, has, has it been really a very huge challenge for people to carry out border businesses because of language. No, I don't think language is more of a hindrance as it used to be. We no. to, like, if you want to sell something, you'll sell it. If you want to buy something, you'll find a way of communicating. The language of money knows no... Eh? There, there, there are no language barriers. If you want if to you have the money and yes, the product yes. speaks for you. Do mm. people in China use it for No, they well, don't. Why is it that China is one of our trading? Mm. So I think... It's it's a good thing if, I mean, knowing more than one language is always a good thing. Yes. And I think if you have Uganda and speak Swahili, speak French, speak English, the better. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say we should yes. discuss Swahili more than English, for instance. I don't mm -hmm. think that would be a very wise move. Okay, Swahili is extremely, yes, an African language, but if you look at it, it's spoken by a couple of countries. In Africa. Eastern Central Africa. Yeah. You're basically looking at a bit of uh, Uganda, a proportion in Uganda, mm. it, it, uh, Kenya, Tanzania, Burundi, mm. Rwanda, and the eastern parts of DRC. Okay. See? And a bit of Zambia and so on. So it's, it's not, uh, I think it's a good thing, but it's not the game changer that we want to make it. All right. Uh, with the, the national budget already presented last month, I'll show you. Do you believe uh, it did address the cause uh, that you would wish for from the trader community? No, overall, the budget was aligned. If you look at uh, the, the budget focused primarily on human capital development. And we must understand that if you have a healthy population and you have a population that's educated, this is the engine of okay. growth. Not just for this financial year, the next, but long term. So I think 
the prioritization, recommendation of different uh, economists, including mm. those in the World Bank who felt in human capital development. Now, what we want to see is value for money. We were told this one received this, this one, this one received this one. It's little done yeah. for the people. Yes. We must emphasize delivery. There used to be something called the uh, delivery unit in the minister's office. You know? I don't know whether I see that it's doing you know, because we you know that. No press talking all that time. You know, lately, Prime Minister makes the moves herself. She goes to these No, no, the issue is not, you, you know, sometimes progress is not, you, you just, you need to move in a structure. You know, you can run very fast, but in the wrong direction. You know that? Yes, very true. <laughs> so, so for us, what we want is very structured progress, mm. analytical, that's based on data, mm. you know, and uh, if you have such a unit, that's able to give us a report card occasionally to say this is how this is performing, this is how this program is performing. It would be for us to hold it to account. But at the moment, mm -hmm. we are told because the budget is just um, a wish list. Hmm? I would like to do this, I would like to do this, I would like to do this. You've set out your plans already. It's just a plan. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to Kampala, I'm going to pass by National Theatre, but along the way, you change your mind. Send me pass by Imperial Real or something like that. Mm. So, similarly, just because something has been said in the budget, there's only done this way. So, having regular report cuts is extremely vital, in my view. Okay. Yes. And um, after the break, we're going to be looking at one, two, three things. One is uh, the issue of the future for the SMEs industry. How is the sector going to perform? What are the set um, plans for the possible of this financial year and then also I think we shall be looking at some of the other challenges that have not been highlighted or if I told Mr. Jomo we can give that to us before we actually go into a break. What are some other that the sector has been facing uh, lately? The, the sector has been um, the sector has been facing the challenge of uh, market you know uh, you know, we have issues in access. Because, yes, we are talking about the FCFT. But we also have issues from exploiting our regional market. And looking at trade statistics, traditionally we've tended to trade more with our neighbors. But there's a lot of difficulty. We have a lot of lamps and roadblocks being placed in the way. So we still have issues around non-tariff barriers, lack of mutual recognition of standards, roadblocks being put up arbitrarily and so on, web bridges and, and, and stuff. So it need to be addressed because as a country we need to bring in foreign exchange. We also need to export. Right now, yes, we are talking about issues of inflation, a weak shilling, but actually it will export us. Because it means that hmm. your product will become quite cheap. Okay. We should now look at exporting this current situation for the benefit of the exporters. But that can't happen if you don't re, uh, if you don't remove the enduring challenges that I've mentioned. That needs to be resolved if you are to be able to tap into not just a regional but a continental continental markets. We also need to see more women and youth uh, take a stage in running businesses and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Women have unique challenges you know, that limit the ability to run growth-oriented MSMEs. One of the issues is um, what our colleagues call unpaid labor, because the women have to run businesses, but they also have to take care of their families. So it means that they have a dual burden. So what can we do to reduce that? You know, if we are building a market career center so that she does not have to worry, she's confident that my child is near my store. You know, so what can we do to ensure that we are able okay. to address those things? How can we design financial products that are more tailored to the needs of women as opposed to uh, pushing out generalized products and services? So these are some of the things that we, we can do in the meantime. I don't think everything must be done by government because we in the private sector have a role. 
private institutions have a role, business loan service providers have a role, financial service providers have a role. So, all right. Yes. After the break, uh, John Ogeba will be taking us through what are the future uh, plans or projections for the next for this seventh financial year that we've just kicked off in this month of July in regards to saying that the sector of the small and medium-sized enterprises does recover. Stick around with me. We'll be right back.